Hey guys, Thursday, wide vlog. Got a little bit of a conditioning workout for you today, pretty standard Thursday. Um, we're gonna do two couplets, back to back, two minute rest in between. You guys should be pretty familiar with that structure here. Um, both AMRAPs are gonna be eight minutes today. So we got 16 total minutes of work, two minute break in between. We're gonna score this thing by total reps in the first AMRAP, plus total reps in the second AMRAP. Get you a big number in there, and uh, we'll roll from there. So. The first AMRAP is AMRAP 8 minutes. We're going to run 100 meters at uh, Garnett. That's just going to be out the garage door to the alley. Come back in the front door. At Cass, it's just going to be halfway down the alley. Turn around, come back, run 100 meters. We're going to come in and do 10 box jumps. About as simple as it gets, guys. Start at the bottom, making sure that we're landing in a strong position, that we're not broken at the top. So I don't want to see people landing here, kind of falling all over place, making sure that we're landing with those heels firmly on the box, strong position, stand, back down. Like usual, make sure that you take your rest at the top. Try and bounce the bottom if you can. If you can't bounce the bottom, still try to rest at the top. Spend as little time as you can on the ground because you have to stand up all the way on the top of the box anyways. So just take your rest at the top. Even if you're not bouncing these things, Jump up, stand, step down, whatever it is, get yourself back up to the box. If you're able to bounce them, makes a lot more sense to rest at the top of the box and find yourself just kind of spending as little time on the ground as possible. So uh, we'll score this thing as one point for the 100 meter run, 10 points for each box jump, count your total reps there. And uh, then we're going to add that to the uh, score for the second 8-minute AMRAP. So after you finish your first 8-minute AMRAP, rest it to 2 minutes. Start the second one and uh, come on over here. The second one is going to involve two movements as well. It's going to be ring dips and double unders. We're going to go with 10 ring dips for the guys, 5 for the ladies. So uh, I should do it this way, that's probably easier. Um, so I've talked about this before, but uh, things to focus on, making sure those elbows stay in. It's not a very strong position to put your shoulder in if you try to do it out here. That's also kind of correlates and runs off of what Anders was saying Monday about the bench press. We were talking about bench pressing with those elbows in as opposed to that power lifting bench where you're all wide out here. If you bench like that, you're not going to have the strength and the proper muscles to ring dip properly. And you absolutely cannot ring dip the way that you would want to bench. So try and bench the way Anders was talking about with those elbows in, and it's going to help you a lot more when you get into these ring dips. So from here, try and lean forward as much as you can. It's really difficult and puts a lot of stress on your triceps if you try to ring dip vertically. But if you can tuck that chin and lean forward and make it into as much of a push-up as possible, the movement's going to be much easier. So whether you're doing these things strict, lean forward, full extension, elbows stay back, like so. And if you've mastered the kip, or if you have not, the kip is basically the same kip that we do in the handstand push-up. The idea is to bring those knees in nice and tight to the body, and then forcefully extend the legs out simultaneously while pushing with the arms. I like to call it the kind of caterpillar kip, because you're compressing and expanding to transfer that momentum. So I'll demo a few reps here. From there, we're gonna move on to double unders. So 10 ring dips for guys, five for the ladies. Come on over, do some double unders in your leg. Um, I seem to have a squirmy left hand when I double under, so I'm gonna do my best to keep that hand in. We all got bad habits. I happen to have one of double unders here. It's the only one. And from there, if you can't double under for 30 reps, we'd much rather you actually do double unders than do singles. So if 30 is a big number, do 15, do 20, do 10. Actually practice doing double unders as opposed to relying on singles all the time. If you can do double unders a little bit, just not super efficient and can't link them together, there's the always challenging single double. And uh, hopefully I can outperform Anders on this one because 
He uh, is not great at the single double, neither am I for that matter. But uh, <laughs> let's give it a shot and see what happens, just for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> Can't do it. One more time. One more time. <laughs> All right, I can't do it. So hopefully you're better at single double than I am, or Anders is, or you can just learn double unders. Yeah, it's the easiest. On, this is the right step to make. Um, anyways, that's the workout, guys. We'll see you Thursday.